Well, this mud wagon project has been a little bit of a mystery and tried to solve the puzzle of where it came from and who made it. Well, I've been in email contact with the grandson of the grandfather who bought this mud wagon. I thought he bought it originally new. Come to find out that is not so. But I think, thanks to a local museum, I think we found the picture of this coach. Well, this grandson who's going to end up driving this stagecoach rustled up some pictures from some local historical museums in his area and I think we've located which coach this is. He sent me seven pictures of seven different coaches and I'm going to go through just the process that I went through and scrutinize which one of these coaches could it possibly be. So this is the order that the pictures came to me, so this is the order that I'm going to show you how they came. So one thing about the variety of the pictures of these coaches, it just demonstrates the wide variety of body styles that was being used at that time. Now this is in the Okanagan Valley, Olmec, Conconnelly, Brewster area of the state of Washington. And this is just this little close area, which oftentimes entailed maybe about 50 mile routes. So a pretty condensed little version of the use of stagecoaches just in that area. So as I browsed through these pictures, this seventh picture showed up and there was hardly any hesitation. This one's not even close to what I have here in the shop. So this is just some of my observations that I went through on the remaining six and I'll go through them one by one and point some things out that stood out to me. So as I zoom in on some of these, because they're old photographs, they do become pretty highly pixelated, but we can still kind of pick out some details from these pictures. Now this coach number one is a fairly large coach. You can see it has three pillars going up to the top. You can see down the side of the box is kind of a decorative side with some raised panels put in there. And the question is, where is the driver's boot? It doesn't have the typical curved driver's boot that is common on many of the coaches. This seems maybe to be just a suspended footboard somehow. But if you look closely at the front of this coach, it's pretty square. Well, in picture number two, there's three vehicles here, and it's actually looking at the coach right in the middle. And kind of an interesting thing about this coach is you'll notice the single woman passenger toward the back of this coach. But distinctly underneath her, there's a fairly square armrest that she seems to be sitting on. So it almost appears that there's a type of a bench seat as the back seat, and I don't see any indications of any other seats or armrests. It's kind of a picture that's in the distance, and when you draw it up close, it's, it's really not very good to see. But it's not the coach that I'm working on. Well, coach number three has the common curved front driver's boot, even though this driver's right leg is just kind of hanging limp across the side. But if you look at the back panel of this coach, you can see a man standing on the sidewalk behind the coach, indicating that the back end of this coach is wide open. And if you look at the luggage rack, you see it's a pretty low slung rack that allows this open area in the back behind the back seat if there is one. Well looking closer at the passengers you can see there are two passengers in this coach. There's a man sitting right in the middle and then toward the front guessing that this is a backward facing seat there's the shoulder of another passenger so you go back up against the driver and his two seats are facing each other. 
So it's very possible there is a rear seat and there's just no passenger sitting there. So coach number four is a typical front driver's boot. You can see the front curve boot. But this is a fairly short couple coach. It appears to be just two passengers. And what's interesting about this, I don't see any indication that there's any side panels on the main passenger portion of this coach. You can see that there is a square luggage compartment on the back end. Looks like they're hauling some kind of a chest. Well, it looks like coach number five is kind of a stripped down model. You don't see the driver's boot as far as the side panels. I think the boot is there but it's not attached to the bottom of the coach body. It seems like it is elevated up 10 or 12 inches. The framework is there. There is just no leather side panels on this boot. And the back end is pretty plain Jane. I don't see any sign that there are passenger seats. In fact, it looks like it's just an open flat bottom. I think this coach is mainly focused on hauling freight instead of passengers. I also don't see any indication that there is a rear luggage boot. But the width of the driver's box is a lot wider than the one that we're working on. And from the shadows cast from the top on whatever the payload is they have, it's square bundles of something. So coach number six, the last one in the lineup, we've already disregarded number seven. Coach number six is the one that caught my attention. It has the standard front driver's boot, as you can see here. And the width of the sideboards on the driver's box is also fairly narrow. I also notice that there are extended framework on the side panels, just like the one that we have here, both top and bottom. And it seems to indicate that there are three seats underneath the rear cover of this coach. You can see the young lady in the front seat evidently is facing backwards because she had to turn to her left to face the camera. So I'm, I'm guessing that this seat faces toward the second seat where the second passenger is. And then behind the second passenger, you can see another man seated in the rear seat. So there are three seats in this coach. Now, if you notice the front passenger as she's turning to her left to face the camera, there's also a young man standing right there and his left arm is resting upon something upon that coach near her seat. Well, I think what this young man is holding on to and what the young lady is bending around is the front support to the top. Now, underneath this young man's left arm, there's an open area that seems to expose a piece of iron that is going at a 45 angle from the back of the driver's box down to the framework of the body. This framework would be very common to help stabilize the front driver's box. And being able to see that iron brace at a 45 also indicates that the, the riser underneath the seat is not solid, but in fact is open. And if you look closely above the gentleman's left hand, and right toward the left shoulder of this young lady that is turning around this post, you'll see a piece of ironwork sitting underneath the driver on the back edge of the driver's box. It seems to indicate to me that this is a handle on this coach. Now on this coach, I have mentioned that there are two handles on each side of this coach body. And it has been a puzzle to me why they've were mounted horizontally. It would be instinctive to step on it and is extremely weak and would have a tendency to break this off. So I think this picture indicates that this handle actually was vertical, not horizontal. And as I measured the bolt spacings between this right side and the left side, remember I had mentioned that the bolt spacing is different well, when I put these bolt spacings against the bolt holes on this ironwork, it looks to me like the right side handle belonged on the left and the left handle belonged on the right. Not in the horizontal, but in the vertical. And another thing I noticed in this picture were three individuals on the driver's box and then the fourth man on the left standing so it appears. Well, I first thought that he must have been standing on the left front wheel. 
But as you look at the height of that wheel in relation to where the feet of this gentleman would have been, I think he is actually standing on the step that is on the left side of this driver's box. We have this same step still intact on this coach. On the bottom of this picture, there is some handwriting. It says, bet, then dot dot, Okanagan dash Brewster. There's a second line that I'm not quite sure what it says. You might give me some thoughts how you decipher that. So this was kind of the process of my scrutinizing these photographs. It was when I looked at this coach number six, Okanagan to Brewster, that I began to recognize some of the same features that I have sitting here on my shop floor. I think that is the coach that is the remnants that is here now. So it really helps me to see some of this added iron work was not in some of those original pictures. This old step that I thought possibly was an add-on, I think it was probably there. I suspected that the front seat underneath the canopy top was a rear-facing seat. This young lady seems to indicate that is so. I have the ironwork that mounts to the seat arms and the seat bases that will go to the top. All this begins to make sense. There isn't much clarity because of the crowd around this coach about the rear luggage boot, but I have one side framing that indicates how that was. I think this Brewster to Okanagan, Okanagan Brewster coach is the one we have in the shop. And as I visited with the grandson, he's in agreement. That's the coach that he thinks that his grandfather bought. And he does remember his grandfather saying that it was wrecked, it was rebuilt. He's looking into seeing who the blacksmith was that built it, but it's all coming together that this was a wrecked coach. A lot of this ironwork is on here, has been added after the fact to patch a wreck. It helps me a lot. Well, as much fun as it is to study old historical pictures, I do actually need to get some work done on this framework. We got the external framework done. I need to put rabbits on both front and the back end to accept the floorboards. So I'm gonna get that done too.
Well, it was an encouragement for me to find these old original photographs and they do help me kind of place things together in my mind with what I have here on the floor to work with. And I thought I would just share this with you so you can kind of see the process of some things that I go through. Sometimes it's more than just doing the physical building. It's kind of getting to know this, which I indicated when we started this project. So that's part of the process, and I appreciate you following along and being a part of that. Thanks for watching.